No live organism can live sanely under the conditions of absolute reality. Shirley Jackson. According to the Statistical Research Department, adults spend an average of six hours on their phone on a daily basis. Sound familiar? Without proper surveillance, escapism can easily slip from enjoyment into reality avoidance. As our world is advancing, our environment becomes more stressful and becomes even more important for us to identify our forms of escapism and how it can be it can have a negative effect on our lives if we let it overpower it, but how we can have a healthy relationship with escapism. As college students, we are under a lot of pressure, so we're constantly looking for ways to control our stress levels, and that could be something that helps us really improve our success in our college, or it can become a way for us to avoid our, our responsibilities and things connected with that. That's why first I want to discuss with you the forms of escapism, the different types of forms of escapism, and what it really is the unforeseen consequences of it, and how we can have a healthy lifestyle with escapism. Escapism is defined as a mental diversion, a mental diversion through forms of entertainment or imagination, and activities like these vary per person. We are a society of escapists, which makes sense because of the pressurized system we're under. In fact, according to the American Psychological Association, stress levels have been on the rise every year, and in fact, in 2021, two in three adults say the problems facing America has them left feeling very overwhelmed. And in fact, escapism becomes a matter of mental health. A blog done in 2012 um, titled Forms of Escapism by David Colhan sums up these forms into four categories. The first one being the preservationists, and these are people who wish to preserve simpler times. For example, the Amish, or maybe even more common, wildlife goers, people who want to escape from that city life. Second is going to be the progressive, and these are people who aren't satisfied with our current way of life and seek to constantly improve it. These could be people who throw themselves into their work or sport, whatever form that may be for them. Third is the traveler, and these are people who want to take themselves to another place to experience an idealized form of their everyday routine. And this could be um, through a vacation so you can get there physically, or this could be through movies, television, music that can take you there mentally. And last is the suicide, which is the most extreme version of escapism, where you violently remove yourself from a from reality, and this is where substance abuse and loneliness um, creep in. Escapism can be something good when used positively, but when used to avoid reality can be quite detrimental. Which brings me to my second point on how escapism has lots of unforeseen qualities um, and consequences underneath it. In fact, escapism is the opposite of mindfulness. It's a way to remove yourself um, from your own. That's why psychoanalysis Amer uh, Amanda Pearl identifies escapism and anxiety as forms of post-traumatic stress disorder. In fact, she says social media, when used upon hours, can have you comparing your life to other people. And when those lives are in fact fake and lead you into a depression, and lead you into a depression and things such as drugs and alcohol are used to um, are used to avoid your reality which becomes quite pleasant for a lot of people and that's why they become addicted and once people are addicted to things such as drugs and alcohol they disassociate from their reality and even their loved ones and it could be something really bad for not only themselves but for their health as well and things such as throwing yourselves into a gaming world, internet browsing, or even shopping makes yourself, your life seem a bit less shiny and that other new life a bit more brighter and more pleasant. It produces dopamine in the brain and gets yourself even more addicted to things that can have other, other issues. And in fact, just look at the effects of COVID-19 on jobs. And the Congressional Research Department says that we still have yet to go back to the unemployment rate we were right before the pandemic. In fact, 
right before the pandemic and monitoring your escapism is a form of mindfulness and that's how it can be used positively in your lifestyle escapism is quite normal and it helps us from becoming too overwhelmed and an article done in 2020 on escapism on escapism by a girl named mel who in fact herself experienced a deep form of escapism but was able to turn her life around by using these simple steps she recommended using a time limit on your forms of escapism whether that be social media or tv you don't want to be one of those adults according to the statistical research department that spends a four a whole fourth of their day or more on their televised on their television or their cellular device in fact she recommends that we have our forms of escapism into something that gets you active, whether that be playing with your dog, going on for a walk, going out with your friends. It is recommended that we are picky with our forms of escapism, escapism so that when we sit down and choose to relax after a stressful day, it not only helps us relax, but also improves our mind. It's a form of self-care and it can be quite beneficial for us and the people around us if we decide to include other people. So today I talked to you about the different forms of escapism, um, how it's unforeseen consequences and, and how you can have a healthy relationship with it. As the world of advances and our technology, our life is becoming more stressful. So it's no reason why we can't really live sanely under the conditions of absolute reality. And I hope my speech helps you to further identify your own forms of escapism and also identify if you ever go too deep into escapism for yourself or your loved ones, because together we can get through these tough times with great mindfulness. Thank you.